Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the top 9 cards being played in Standard. These are the most popular cards. And let's begin and let's take note of what is rotating and what is not rotating and which colors. So essentially, to summarize, the red decks look very, very strong. The number one played card is a braid. It is one in a, in a red. Choose one, it deals free damage to target creature or destroy target artifact. Very get good against vehicles. X line, we know that they are pirate ship vehicles. So this is great instant speed removal. And it's no wonder it is now a $3 card for uncommon. Very, very difficult to do. At $3, you actually want to see this uncommon more than most rares. In the Hour of Devastation set. Next, we go to another uncommon, which is almost $9. Fatal Push. This is also one of the most popular cards in modern. This is the second most popular card in standard as of this moment. It sees play in every black deck. It sees play in most black decks in modern as well. It's crazy, right? It's A for Revolt, meaning it's not going to rotate out. You have a braid and you have fatal puss as one and two. It just shows you the power of these uncommons because the next one we're going to look at is also uncommon. I like where magic is going where all the power level is in the non-mythics and therefore you don't have to buy the mythics as much. The only time I see the mythics on the list is when Star City Games is trying to promote the deck, trying to get you to buy it. It's pretty, it's pretty ridiculous. Right? Or they'll have someone write an article. Hey, buy this really expensive mythic. But anyway, A for Hub is the next most played. So we had a Braid, Fatal Puss, A for Hub. If you don't have these, you got to pick them up now or you got to trade for them. They're not going to go down in value because they're not rotating. A for Hub being from Kaladesh. Now, do I kind of wish they were all from the same set? Yeah, that would be pretty, pretty cool. I do believe a for hub will see some play in modern in the Adrazi decks, if not already. I don't really keep up with the Adrazi decks. That's not really my store's meta. My store's meta, everyone's playing control decks now. I'm not sure why. Or they're playing red deck wins in modern. I'm still... I ha I'll show you my new deck. I love my new deck. It is... Uh, what's it called? It, it combos, right? It's a combo deck with Coco and... It's kind of a, a more optimized version of the deck I've already been playing. Next, we do get to talk about a card which is going to rotate out. Um, and it is Grasp of Darkness. I believe this is from Oath of the Gatewatch. And this card is very good. Removal is always good. Instant speed removal is just premium. It's premium, right? Uh, this card will rotate out, making Fatal Push even more necessary for most decks. Uh, but most decks play both of them. It's a good one-two punch. Uh, the double black actually did not prevent people from playing it. During Scars of Meriden, I don't remember if this card was played that much. I'm going to guess that the answer is no, because people were playing artifacts. And Affinity was, it's not like vehicles, but it was stronger in my opinion. So great, great card. I mean, this is both an uncommon and a common. So it depends on what version that you wanted. Uh, it's also interesting at the $1 price point. Mm, Mythic. Kaladas. I told you to pick this card up when she was, I think, 20. Somebody go back to the video and see like what price she was. Maybe she was 25. But anyway, it is 34 and a half now. Once Gideon rotates out, this is by far the strongest Planeswalker. I look at the other Planeswalker, Lily Honor, Death something is okay, I think. But it's more casually, because it's like a va vampire. No, sorry, not vampire. It is a zombie Lily Honor. That's where I see her price coming from. But this card is just powerful. I mean, it is, it is very, very strong. It is, in my opinion, pushed. I know power level because I've seen a lot of magic cards and I've played magic since beta and there's some cards I look at and say, oh, Fatal Push is very good. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. But Chandra, like even to say to buy at 25, 
that's a hard thing to say because you're not really making much room for profit. But I think she still will go can go up. Now, another uncommon that's seeing a lot of play is this one. I think it's very good. I think you want to get these in foil. And I feel like that overall, they're just they're just good. I don't know how else to say it. It's it's a very good land. And it's a beautiful piece of land. And for the Aldrazi, it's actually beneficial. And in one life, it's not much of a difference, you know? This is one of the most played... What is this number? So we had um, a Braid, Fatal Puss, A for Hub, Grass of Darkness, the last one we just did. This is number six. Yeah, six. The sixth most played is a non-basic land. That's a desert. I made fun of deserts, and I thought it was kind of funny, but as you're going to see, there's actually another desert on this list, I believe. Alright, number 7, Earthshaker Kenra. This really surprised me. Um, I should not have been surprised, but it turns out Externalize is slightly better than I... Oh, Eternalize. I keep saying Externalize, but Eternalize is much better... Or, Slightly better. It's just better than I predicted. So I was incorrect. I felt this entire set was very bad. The set is not bad in a vacuum. But do I believe deserts are going to be played in modern? No. Do I be, believe Eternalize is going to be played in modern? No. But after rotation, I mean, we're rotating four sets out. Including Gideon, which is the strongest. You know, he's, he's very strong. And after we rotate in, Liliana, the last hope. The most expensive card in standard for the longest time. So we rotate out the two premium mythics. And we get this type of stuff. Glorybringer, remember, was a promo. So it's not like... Uh, there's a lot of copies of, of it. It's a very good card. It's a lot of damage, a lot of power and for what it is. And I think it's interesting uh, it's interesting because its price is not going up it is the eighth most played card and yet its price has stabilized and i'm not sure why that's the case are there too many glory bringers because the promo has like a ton of them or that doesn't really make too much sense to me like how many game day promos could there possibly be of this card and like languish was a ten dollar card at one time those game day promos are nice uh, like, what's that? Storm Breath? No, not Storm Breath. The other dragon from Dragon's Tark Hero, which was very good. I think it was some type of dragon. Anyway, let's go to the ninth most played card is a common desert. <laughs> if, you, if I had to predict this, I would have not predicted it. But hey, this desert is not too bad. It enters the battlefield. It deals one damage to target player. It is a desert, so it does have that advantage. It's an 84 cent foil, which I think is low. I don't think that this, I don't, I feel like this card for Adrazi is ideal. So instead of Lightning Bolt to the face, it does a little bit of damage. And then for the Adrazi decks, it actually does what it needs to do. And I think it's very good. I, I, ninth most played card in standard is a common desert. That's interesting. I would not have guessed. But anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below if what you guys think about these cards. Bye, guys.